Okay, thank you, Sudip Ghosh ji. Uh, without any further ado, let's start with the content. So today, in this particular YouTube live session, we will be looking into the modern administration. Now you know that modern administration is one of the most important topics from your UGC NET examination. Uh, those two or three questions, you know, that usually, you know, those two or three questions that usually, you know, make the difference between NET JRF and uh, uh, passing only the NET examination for AP. Those are the real questions, you know. Uh, which you should be targeting. I'm pretty sure that if you have started learning for uh, UGC net, if you have started preparing for it, you will clear it. Okay. Obviously, we are here to help you out. But at the same time, uh, those two or three questions that, you know, uh, take away your net JRF from you, those should be uh, the, the ones that you should be targeting upon. And I think modern administration is one such topic. I really do believe that. Modern administration and the connecting topic that we will be discussing in our app uh, today. Um, so we will be discussing uh, our uh, in apps in our in app session uh, tonight at 9 p.m. Ashoka's Dhamma, right? So here is my YouTube and application plan. As you all know by now, I come uh, uh, on YouTube live every day at 6 p.m. Sunday to Thursday. Sunday to Thursday, 6 p.m. That's my YouTube live uh, uh, timing. Apart from that, I also come live on the Baijus exam prep app at 9 p.m. Right. So today, uh, tonight at 9 p.m., we'll be looking into the connecting topic of this particular session. So right now we are going to discuss modern administration, as you know, and then we will be discussing Ashoka's Dhamma. Let me also remind you, uh, if you have not downloaded the app, please scan the QR code that is displayed on your screen, uh, post which obviously it will take you to the downloadable uh, this thing, a uh, web page. Uh, where you can download the badges exam prep application apart from that we also provide one-on-one -on -one counseling so please make sure you know that if you have any doubt you can call on the number that is given on the screen and we'll be able to help you out with your doubts apart from that a huge huge announcement we will be starting with UG Senate history 2024 batch number two which will be in English and we are starting this particular batch on 7th of March I repeat, we are launching this batch for UGC Net history on 7th of March. So on 7th, 8th and 9th, you will have a few demo lectures. 10th onwards, we will have our uh, proper in class, uh, you know, uh, the proper study plan execution. I repeat, we are going to launch our history batches um, for English on 7th of March. I request you all to please uh, enroll yourself so that we can make sure that you clear your net along with JRF. Theek hai? UGC net do June 2024 ko aim kar net December 2024 ko aim kar to hai. 7th of March se batch chalu hogi. 10th of March se study plan completely ek tarah se chalu ho jayega. Theek hai? I hope uh, you have understood this very important announcement. If you have, please uh, send uh, uh, this thing a thumbs up in, in chat or write OK in the chat. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, Okay, uh, without any further ado now, uh, let's get started. So, when we talk about the Mauryan Empire, obviously an introduction is quite necessary. So, Mauryan Empire is perhaps the most vast empire that you will come across in the ancient Indian history. Right, we come across many empires in the ancient India. But the most important and the most vast empire is none other than the Mauryan Empire. If we talk about the geographical extent of Mauryan Empire, then it has to be, you know, Kandahar, which is in modern day Afghanistan to Mysore, which, which is now modern day Karnataka state of India, right? Uh, many of you might think, uh, what, what about the parts which are at the tip of the Indian peninsula? 
those were not formally uh, included in the empire but the, the kings of those particular areas they were tributary kings so they used to pay tributes to the mauryan king okay uh, the empire however only lasted for 150 years there are eight odd kings the three most important ones are the first three so the founder of the dynasty chandragupta maurya uh, his son bindusara and his son ashoka these are the three most important kings of the mauryan dynasty the last king obviously is Briyadatta. We'll talk about him in a little bit. Uh, what are the sources through which we get to know about the Mauryan Empire and the administration of the Mauryan Empire? Obviously, there has to be Buddhist uh, sources. There has to be Jaina sources as well. Can someone tell me why the Jaina sources would also be there? See, the plain reason being Chandragupta Maurya actually was a Jain. Uh, a Jain. He was the follower of the Jain religion. right? And Ashoka, as we all know, um, when we will be discussing Ashoka's Dhamma, we all will come to know that, you know, he was the follower of Buddhism, right? Apart from that, a few Puranic uh, uh, textbooks, Sanskrit uh, textbooks and a little bit of secular uh, this thing as well are there. So, the secular uh, books that we have include the two most important uh, uh, sources that we have, Megasthenesis Indica and Kautilya, uh, Kautilya's Arthashastra. The most important source for the Mauryan uh, administration and the Mauryan Empire as a whole has to be the Ashokan inscriptions, the edicts as we call them. Okay, what is the meaning of edicts? Edicts is a royal order. Yeah, right. So, it is a, a kind of a royal order wherein the, uh, the person who is issuing it is a person in authority and he expects someone else or in this particular uh, uh, example, his subjects to do something, right? Um, see, there is a brief history of how Magadha came to uh, importance. What were the causes because of which the Magadha, which was one of the Janapadas, 16 Jan Mahajanapadas, became important. Okay? And then from there, you have uh, the uh, this thing of Maurya dynasty, the starting point of the Maurya dynasty, right? So, the Chandragupta Maurya founded the Maurya king, um, uh, Maurya empire in uh, circa 321 BCE, right? So, that's when he has uh, founded the empire and uh, he was a Jain, uh, he became a Jain monk in the later years of his life. So, when he willingly transferred his empire to his son Bindusara, that's when he became a Jain monk. And there is a uh, this thing that goes that uh, there is a uh, story that goes that uh, after uh, becoming a Jaina monk, he traveled to the south of India in the peninsular India in the modern day Karnataka. That's where he went, and he actually died by Sallekhana. Sallekhana is also known as Santhara. Santhara and Sallekhana is one and the same thing. It's a Jaina tradition of uh, you know dying by um, uh, fasting. So you fast until death. That's the meaning of Sallekhana or, or Santhara. Uh, apart from that, there are many areas around Shravan Belgoda, uh, you know, which have the prefix Chandra, from which, you know, many scholars believe that he must have come over here. In the picture over here, you can see the Badrabahu cave. That's where it is believed that Chandragupta Maurya breathed his last. Okay. Next up, we have Bindusara, uh, who is known as Amitrochetis in Greek and Amitraghata in Sanskrit. Amitraghata simply means the destroyer of the enemy. Amitra means enemy. A mitra. Jo mitra nahi hai wo. Ghata means destroyer. Ghat karna uska. Nash karna. Sir, you know, sarvanash karna. A mitra ghata. Jo mitra nahi hai uska ghat karne wala wo. Bindusar. Amitra ghata se usko Sanskrit mein bolte hai. And the Greek sources mention him as Amitrokathis. Right? He was later on um, uh, succeeded by his son Ashoka. Uh, so, uh, Ashoka, uh, you know, became uh, somewhat an important ruler of this entire dynasty. He died in 330, uh, sorry, 232 BCE. Um, and, and this particular era of Ashoka is actually the most important one for us. Because the administration that we are going to look into is of this particular era. Right? So, Obviously, by the discussion that we had, the introduction that we had, 
we can come to a conclusion that this particular empire was a very vast empire if i am saying that the empire stretched from kandahar which is in modern day afghanistan to say uh, mysore which is in modern day karnataka state of india you can actually understand the extent uh, of this particular empire and when you have such an such a vast empire you cannot have a centralized system of administration there has to be uh, regional systems at work this is nothing but common sense that we have employed over here most of the historians today believe that you know itne bade paimane pe agar aapka samrajya hai to koi ek centralized system ho hi nahi sakti to isme aapko kya karna hai isme matlab aapko yahi baat dhyan mein rakhni hai कि जो इंफॉर्मेशन हम मॉडर्न एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन के बारे में पढ़ेंगे दैट इज मोर और लेस यू नो सेंट्रलाइज अराउंड पाटलिपुत्र द कैपिटल ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर किंगडम ओके द लास्ट किंग ऑफ द मॉडर्न डायनेस्टी वॉज बृहदात्रा एंड ही वॉज किल्ड बाय पुष्यमित्रा इन सिरका 187 एटी सेवन बी सी पुष्यमित्रा लेटर ऑन गोज अड एंड फाउंड द शुंगा डायनेस्टी ओके सो वी विल नॉट बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द शुंगा डायनेस्टी इन ओवर यर बट i needed to give you a closure on the political history of the mauryans right so that's why this particular point has been included let's quickly go into the political divisions the polity of the mauryans and how the administration was uh, politically divided when it comes to the mauryans right so the mauryan administration as we have already understood was quite elaborate nobody can deny the fact that it was elaborate right so if you are talking about an empire you know which is so vast you really can't you know deny the fact that even your administrative machinery would be quite elaborate so uh, your uh, uttarapatha the the five most important provinces the five most important uh, political divisions um, uh, of of mauryan empire obviously the first one was patliputra that was the central capital and obviously the king had direct control over it but apart from that uh you know there were four important um, uh, regional centers of powers right and those four centers were takshila tosali suvarnagiri and ujjaini ujjaini is also known as ujjain theek hai so takshila obviously is the uttarapatha that's the name of the province suvarnagiri is dakshinapatha it is in modern day karnataka takshila is in modern day uh, pakistan ujjaini obviously modern day madhya pradesh and that is the western uh, uh, headquarter Tosali uh, Eastern Headquarter. These were the five major political centers of the um, this thing, uh, Mauryan administration. Ujjaini is also called as Avanti Patha, and Tosali is called as Prachya Patha. See, Prachya means Oriental or East. Okay, so Tosali from this particular word itself, we can understand Prachya Patha. Path means root. Okay. but here it what it means is this tosali is in the eastern side so prach prachapath suvarnagiri is dakshinapath takshila is uttarapath ujjaini is uh, avantipath avanti is pashchim theek hai patliputra obviously was the central capital takshila and ujjaini were the most important trading centers back then and that's why they also became the provincial capitals right so takshila was the northern province uh, capital ujjaini was the western province capital suvarnagiri obviously the southern provincial capital and it was also important for the gold mines of karnataka um if you you know have read about the harappan civilization as well you must know that the harappans also imported their golds from the karnataka gold mines if you have seen the recent movie not it's not recent anymore but uh, there is uh, this uh, uh, kannada uh, action film that became quite famous with the youths um, uh, that's uh, the name of that particular uh, this thing is i suppose kgf kolar gold fields right and it became quite famous with the uh, youth of india yash has acted in it so it's a kannada uh, movie and uh, you know it has nothing to do with history per se but i just you know remembered that's why i told you so karnataka is quite famous for its gold even the harappans used to import their gold from karnataka and that's why you know suvarnagiri becomes important southern provincial capital and also important from the point of view of gold mines right tosali as i have already talked about is the eastern provincial capital ujjaini is the western provincial capital okay takshila and ujjaini are very important from the point of view of trade as well 
Takshila is seen as the gateway to northwestern trade. Ujjaini is seen as a gateway into the South India. Okay. Also, please remember these things. Patliputra, obviously, modern day Patna, uh, very important from the point of view of central control. Okay. Now, uh, let's uh, give it an understanding of where you know exactly uh, these uh, uh, very important uh, provincial centers of uh, that existed during the Ashokan times were. So if you you know uh, pay close attention, you can see the Gandhara over here, and uh, beneath that you have Takshila, the northern uh, this thing, provincial capital. Then you obviously have the Patliputra, which is the central capital of the entire uh, uh, empire from which the emperor ruled. Then you have Tosali, which is in the east, the eastern provincial capital. And then you have Ujjaini, which is obviously the uh, western uh, provincial capital. Then you have Suvarnagiri in modern day Karnataka which is the um, southernmost uh, this thing southern provincial capital without any further ado let's dive deep into the next important part and that is the saptanga theory i know that this is very much known to everyone and that is why i'm not going to you know um, discuss it this at you know much length so let's just simply deep, uh, dive deep into this saptanga theory has obviously been given by kautilya in his artha shastra in which he talks about the seven limbs of the state I repeat, it is given by Kautila in his Artha Shastra, which is uh, one of the primary sources to study Mauryan uh, Empire and administration, in which he has talked about the seven limbs of the state. The first limb, obviously, is the Swamin, or the Lord, or the King. Right. The second most important is Amatya, that is the minister. Okay. Third one, Janapada. Jana means people, Pada means where they set their feet. So, Janapada simply means the, the places where people have settled. Okay. The, uh, the, the fourth one is Durga, which is obviously the fortified capital. In this particular scenario, it, it is Patliputra. Kosha is the tre treasury. Matlab, jo raja ka jo khajina hota hai, wo. Okay. Danda is obviously justice and force. So, coercive power, police and army. Right. Apart from that, judiciary as well. Mitra, ally. Aapke, matlab, jo koi bhi mitra honge. For example, I told you that Kerala Putram, that is Cheras, they were the Mitra of uh, uh, the Mauryan king. Okay. Uh, apart from that, please remember that Swamin was in a constant state of vigilance. Matlab Raja ko apne khud ki suraksha ki upar bahut zada dhyan dene ki awashakta mehsus hoti thi. I repeat, Raja ko apne khud ki um, iske upar. Uh, क्या बोलते हैं सुरक्षितता के ऊपर ध्यान देने की बहुत ज्यादा आवश्यकता महसूस होती थी इन फैक्ट इन अर्थशास्त्र कौटिल्या मेंशंस दैट यू द किंग कैन नॉट जस्ट सिंपली यू नो बी वेरी लेथार्जिक अबाउट हिज ओन सेफ्टी ही कैन नॉट स्लीप इन द सेम बेडरूम ट्वाइस तो मतलब ट्वाइस मतलब एक के एक के पास एक के बाद एक दो दिन कंटीन्यूअसली एक बेडरूम में राजा नहीं सो सकता Apart from that, अगर आप पैलेस बना रहे हो तो पैलेस में आपके सीक्रेट एंट्री और एग्जिट पैसेज होने चाहिए ताकि जब कभी भी राजा के ऊपर कभी भी कोई अटैक कर दे तो वो आ, वहां से भाग पाए ठीक है खाना खाने से पहले वो खाना दूसरों से टे, टेस्ट भी करवाए ठीक है सो so, इस तरह की बहुत सारी चीजें अब उसके आजू बाजू इर्द गिर्द कंटिन्यूसली फीमेल बॉडी रहेंगी जो बॉ एंड एरो के साथ तैयार रहेंगी कंटिन्यूसली और जब कभी भी राजा इन प्रोसेशन लोगों के सामने आता है तब उसकी जो सिक्योरिटी है वो काफी आ, ये होनी चाहिए अप टू द मार्क होनी चाहिए तभी वो बाहर आए लोगों के सामने सो द किंग ऑलवेज यूज टू फियर अबाउट समवन ट्राइंग टू असैसिनेट हिम ठीक है तो एक कांस्टेंट स्टेट ऑफ विजिलेंस में किंग जो है या स्वामी जिसे हम कहते हैं सप्तांग थियरी में वो रहता था ठीक है uh, Let's go ahead and understand the administration of the army. So, Megasthenes, which is in the name of book, he has written that there are six, uh, you know, there, are, there is a committee which again has six subcommittees. Now, please understand Megasthenes, which is in the name of book, is that we have a direct copy of Milti Hani. So, we have a Megasthenes in the name of the book. This is the same case with. Uh, Periplus of the Eridrian Sea also. ठीक है तो किस तरह से पता चलता है थोड़े बहुत जो एक्सट्रैक्ट है इंडिका के वो हमें मिले हैं एज रिटर्न बाय मेगास्थनिस है ना अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट लेटर हिस्टोरियंस एंड द कोर्ट पोएट्स 
हैव ऑल्सो यूज इंडिका बाय मेगास्थेनस तो मेगास्थेनस ऐसा बोलता है उसके ऊपर हमारे ऐसे विचार है इस तरह से उन्होंने लिखा है बिकॉज ऑफ विच वी गेट टू नो वॉट मेगास्थेनस सेड एंड वॉट अदर्स हैव सेड ठीक है तो उससे भी मेगास्थेनस के आ, मतलब विचार हमें समझ में आते हैं द पेरिप्लस ऑफ द इरिद्रियन सी के बारे में भी यही है इट्स अ ग्रीक अकाउंट रिटर्न बाय एन अनोन ऑथर और इसका हमें ओरिजिनल टेक्स्ट नहीं मिलता बट उसको इस्तेमाल करके लेटर ऑन जब विद्वानों ने अपने बुक्स लिखे तब उन्होंने द पेरिप्लस ऑफ द इरिद्रियन सी का इस्तेमाल करके जो लिखा है उसकी वजह से हमें समझ में आता है कि द पेरिप्लस ऑफ द इरिद्रियन सी में क्या लिखा था ठीक है <coughs> तो एक कोलेबोरेशन हो जाता है इसमें ठीक है नाउ लेट्स कम बैक टू द ओरिजिनल डिस्कशन दैट वी वर हैविंग एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ द आर्मी एक कमिटी है जिसके छह सब कमिटीज हैं तो उसमें ये जो सिक्स सब कमिटीज हैं उसमें फर्स्ट है नेवी दूसरी है ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड प्रोविजन तीसरी है इन्फेंट्री दैट इज फुट सोल्जर्स चौथी है यू नो द हॉर्स सोल्जर्स दैट इज द कैवलरी फिफ्थ है चैरियट वो है रथ और जो छठवी है वो है एलिफेंट आर्मी और एलिफेंट्री राइट सो दीज आर दिक्स इंपॉर्टेंट कमिटीज आउट ऑफ विच द सेकेंड इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट द सेकेंड इज ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड प्रोविजन सो दिस विल लुक इन टू एवरी थिंग सो यू नो लाइक रिक्रूटमेंट ऑफ द सोल्जर्स ट्रेनिंग ऑफ द सोल्जर्स मेकिंग फूड प्रोविजन फॉर एवरी वन एंड एवरी यूनिट ऑफ द आर्मी और से यू नो मोबिलाईजिंग द आर्मी फ्रॉम वन प्रोविंस टू अनादर so on and so forth so the second sub committee was actually the most important out of all these six committees apart from that you know uh, if we talk about the uh, the court of the king then obviously 18 tirthas are uh, mentioned which are also called as mahamatras and 27 superintendents have also been mentioned by kautilya in his arthashastra uh, mantri parishad and sabha have also been mentioned mantri parishad could have been a smaller body in which the most important people were uh, included sabha was a much bigger body of the ministers sita obviously was you know the named uh, to the land uh, a name for, uh, which was used for the land that was directly controlled by the king okay apart from that this word was also used for the villages that were established by the crown himself it was also used for the crown land ठीक है तो राजा का जहां कहीं पे भी लैंड माना जाएगा तो उसको सीता बोलते हैं इसमें मॉरियन रिकॉर्ड्स में अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट यू शुड आल्सो अंडरस्टैंड कि एम्पायर बहुत ही बड़ा है तो ऑब्वियसली आर्मी भी बहुत बड़ी होगी वी डू गेट सर्टन एग्जैजरेटेड अकाउंट्स लेफ्ट टू अस बाय यू नो पीपल लाइक मेगास्थेनस एंड एंड कौटिल्या हु क्लेम दैट मॉरियंस हैड एन आर्मी ऑफ सिक्स लैक पीपल विच ऑब्वियसली सीम्स टू बी ओवर Uh, but what we can really conclude from such uh, from such statements is the fact that um, mauryans perhaps had the biggest army that we could ever imagine in the ancient indian history but then having a huge army also comes with its own uh, demerits um, army as you all know requires a lot of economic arrangements army ke liye chahiye paisa ठीक है तो इसी वजह से मौर्यन किंग्स जो है जगह जगह नए नए टैक्स वसूल करते चले जा रहे हैं नए 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 टैक्स वो इंट्रोड्यूस करते चले जा रहे हैं ठीक है तो ये भी बात आपको ध्यान में रखनी चाहिए दिस इज क्वाइट इंपॉर्टेंट कि जितना बड़ा एम्पायर होता है उतना ही आपका फिर ये भी बड़ा हो जाता है ओवरऑल uh, uh, क्या बोलते हैं uh, उत्तरदायित्व जो होता है और जितना बड़ा एम्पायर उतना बड़ा उत्तरदायित्व उसकी रक्षा करने के लिए उतनी बड़ी आर्मी चाहिए उतनी बड़ी आर्मी को मेंटेन करने के लिए पैसे चाहिए तो पैसे अगर चाहिए तो आपको क्या करना पड़ेगा टैक्सेस लगाने पड़ेंगे विदाउट टैक्सेस यू कांट रियली यू नो कम अप विथ विथ मनी सो गोइंग अहेड लेट्स टेक अ लुक एट सम ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट ऑफिसर्स वॉट वेर देर डेजिग्नेशन एंड वॉट वेर देर फंक्शन तो उनके डेजिग्नेशन मतलब उनके पद उनका पदभार क्या था और उस पदभार में वो क्या क्या काम करते थे ये समझने की हम लोग कोशिश करते हैं ऑब्वियसली पिछले पेज पे चलते हैं तो यहाँ पे देखिए ऑन ऑन द लेफ्ट यू हैव मेगास्थेनस ऑन द राइट यू हैव दिस थिंग कौटिल्या राइट ओके गोइंग अहेड आई हैव इंक्लूडेड दिस सारनाथ कैपिटल फ्रॉम द अशोकन टाइम 
because whenever we talk about government services in india whenever we talk about uh, say upsc and all uh, the uh, lion capital of sarnath comes to our mind okay so this has become ya hamari raj mudra hai right india ki so this is our national emblem so you know that's why i have included this this actually in the modern sense has also become uh, uh, equivalent to authority power and government services right so that's why i have included this particular photo over here sama samar samaha 3 is actually the chief revenue collector samnidha 3 is treasurer and lawyer storekeeper so you should remember that the mauryans had given a lot of important to i think fifth uh, element of the saptanga theory which was kosha right it was fifth kosha that is treasury तो समनी धत्री जो है वो बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट बन जाता है कोश जो है पैसा जो है या ट्रेजरी जो है इसके ऊपर बहुत ज्यादा स्ट्रेस दिया गया है इवन इन अर्थशास्त्र ठीक है बाय द वे दिस लेट लेट मी यू नो मेक वन थिंग रियली वेरी क्लियर अगर आपको अर्थशास्त्र इस बुक के नाम से अगर आपको ये लगता है कि यहाँ पे बहुत ज्यादा पैसों के बारे में बात की है तो इट इज नॉट सो दे हैव यू नो कौटिल्या हैज एक्चुअली टॉक्ट अबाउट हाउ टू रूल सो इट इज मोर ऑफ अ बुक ऑन how to you know rule um, you know it's a rule book for a ruler rather than you know it being an economic textbook or something of that sorts right it has talked about revenue and and so, some of these names have also appeared in uh, arthashastra but it is majorly a book that tells a king how to rule okay now akshapatala is an office of, which was an office in the capital was a record come audit office so it used to maintain records and apart from that it also was an audit office so the different departments that used to exist the audit used to be conducted by um, aksha patel purohit as we all know this is quite simple straight forward he used to be the royal priest theek hai anta mahamattas were the mahamattas who were in charge of the frontier areas the name itself should give away the meaning anta anta matlab end jo antim hai ठीक है तो अंत मतलब अपनी कैपिटल से बहुत दूर अंत में जो टेरिटरी है वहां के महामत्ता अंत में जो टेरिटरी है वहां के महामत्ता अंत महामत्ता ठीक है धम महामत्ता ऑब्वियसली दीज वेर अपॉइंटेड बाय अशोका इन द थर्टीन ईयर ऑफ हिज आफ्टर द यू नो ड्यूरिंग द थर्टीन ईयर आफ्टर हिज कोरोनेशन तो धम महामत्ता ऑब्वियसली वेर द ऑफिशियल दैट वेर अपॉइंटेड बाय अशोका फॉर द दिस थिंग ऑफ धमा फॉर द क्या बोलते हैं एक प्रकार से अपना धर्म को uh, ये लोगों तक पहुंचाने के लिए धम्म महामात्रा के नाम के ऑफिसर्स उसने uh, उन्होंने uh, ये किए थे uh, नए ऑफिसर्स उन्होंने uh, ये किए थे क्या बोलते हैं नियुक्त किए थे यस दैट्स द करेक्ट हिंदी वर्ड राइट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट प्रादेशिका रजुका एंड युक्ता वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ऑफिसर्स एट द डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल अशोका के अशोका के मेजर रॉक एडिक्ट में भी इनके नाम आते हैं तो डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल पे प्रादेशिका राजुका एंड युक्ता आते हैं और ये जो है डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल के ऑफिसर्स ये भी काफी इंपॉर्टेंट काम करते थे ऑब्वियसली देयर फंक्शंस आल्सो इंक्लूडेड कलेक्शन ऑफ लैंड रेवेन्यू मेंटेनिंग ऑफ पीस एंड लॉ एंड ऑर्डर एंड ट्रांकुलिटी यू नो मेंटेनिंग द लॉ द रिकॉर्ड ऑफ द लैंड रेवेन्यू सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ सेनापति नायकाज एज द नेम सजेस्ट वेर इंपॉर्टेंट मिलिट्री ऑफिसर्स Uh, officers and yuvraja was a crown prince so ashoka was the yuvraja who was also the governor of ujjaini right and later on he also perhaps became the governor of takshila but nobody can actually uh, corroborate this so most of the historians today believe that he was perhaps the governor of ujjaini and then later on he became the governor of takshila or else he was the governor of ujjaini and may have gone to takshila for a brief period of time to quell a revolt over there that's it This is the only thing that we can say about Ashoka being a Yuvaraja. ठीक है. Now let's go ahead and understand the administration in the Nagaras. Again, Megasthenes' account uh, of city administration is uh, quite important. However, what we need to uh, understand is Megasthenes जब बात करते हैं, तब वो actually uh, नगर uh, के बारे में बात नहीं करते, वो पाटलिपुत्र के बारे में बात करते हैं. So, हमें ये समझना चाहिए कि एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ द नगर जब हम बोलते हैं या नगर मतलब सिटी ऑब्वियसली 
सो पाटलिपुत्र के बारे में जब वो बात कर रहे हैं तब कैन वी टेक दिस पर्टिकुलर मॉडल एंड अप्लाई टू सम अदर सिटी दैट एग्जिस्टेड ड्यूरिंग द मॉरन एम्पायर द प्लेन आंसर इज नो यू कैन डू दैट वॉट डज इट मीन इट इट मीन्स दैट you know this type of administrative system was perhaps kind of you know existed only in patliputra and rest of the cities had their own different type of regional administration of the cities theek hai they may have taken some uh, hints from the administration of patliputra but we can't be sure of it okay but we do know about the administration of patliputra uh, apart from that we can, we have to also understand ki agar megasthenes ne likh ke rakha hai iska matlab ye nahi hai कि आ, मतलब आ, आ, यही करेंगे आ, क्या करते हैं आ, मतलब यही होता होगा या दिस वाज़ द ओनली थिंग दैट हैपन दैट वाज़ नॉट द केस सी व्हेन ही टॉक्स अबाउट द सिक्स कमिटीज ईच इंपॉर्टेंट कमिटी वाज इन इन चार्ज ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर दिस थिंग सो द फिफ्थ सॉरी लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट वन इंडस्ट्रियल आर्ट सो any type of uh, uh, this thing that you have mentioned um, any type of uh, profession like potter or you know uh, weaving baskets or clothing weaving clothes etc etc all of them they fall under this industrial art also includes important uh, things such as you know carpentry uh, iron smith so on and so forth theek hai to ye uh, iske upar ek committee thi एंटरटेनमेंट एंड सर्वेलेंस ऑफ फॉरेनर्स ये एक कमिटी थी मेंटेनेंस ऑफ रिकॉर्ड्स एंड ऑफ बर्थ एंड डेथ ट्रेड एंड कॉमर्स कलेक्शन ऑफ टैक्सेस दीज वे सम ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंट कमिटीज राइट सो सर्वेलेंस ऑफ फॉरेनर्स एंड एंटरटेनमेंट दीज आर एक्चुअली टू सेपरेट कमिटीज ओके सो ऑल टूगेदर सिक्स कमिटीज विद दिस लेट मी टेल यू दैट ओके दिस पर्टिकुलर फोटो दैट आई हैव इंक्लूडेड इज दैट ऑफ अशोका Uh, which has been extracted from the sanchi stupa uh, here you can see that ashoka is riding a rath okay and he is said to be moving to, uh, towards um, meeting the nag people theek hai to nag jo log hote hain inka matlab uh, bada ek uh, vishisht sthan hai buddhism aur hinduism mein to vedic religion aur buddhism mein bahut unka vishisht sthan hai uh, aise kaha jata hai ki nagas they actually live in the हेल ठीक है और ये जो नागास हैं ये ह्यूमन फॉर्म भी ले सकते हैं ठीक है सो दे कैन इधर बिकम ह्यूमन और दे कैन रिमेन हाफ सरपंट एंड हाफ ह्यूमन एंड सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ ठीक है तो इनको मिलने के लिए अशोक जा रहा है ऑब्वियसली इट्स दंत कथा जिसे बोलते हैं उस तरह से है ये ठीक है इट्स नॉट ट्रू ऑब्वियसली यू के नॉट हैव हाफ सरपंट हाफ मैन बट या सो दैट्स वेर अशोक एक बात बतानी थी अशोका कैसे दिखते थे ये हमें भी पता नहीं है नो बडी एक्चुअली नोज हाउ अशोका यूज टू लुक लाइक यू नो सो इवन दिस पर्टिकुलर इमेजिनेशन दैट अशोका राइडिंग रथा दैट्स नॉट एक्यूरेट किसी को पता नहीं अशोक दिखते कैसे थे द सेम वे एज लाइक यू नो किसी को पता नहीं कि बुद्ध कैसे दिखते थे ठीक है सो वी हैव अ फ्री कनेक्टिंग सेशन ऑन बैजुज एग्जाम प्रेप एप्लीकेशन टू नाइट एट नाइन पी एम तो वहां पे जरूर आना हमारा टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन रहेगा अशोका धम्मा विच इज अ कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री टॉपिक टू मौर्यन एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन सो नॉट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन पर से इसका नहीं है लेकिन मौर्यन एम्पायर में एक बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक वो भी माना जाता है यू ऑन नो कि मौर्यन एम्पायर के तीन इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स हैं पहला है एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन दूसरा है अशोका धम्मा और तीसरा है आर्ट एंड आर्किटेक्चर अंडर द मौर्यस राइट तो इसमें से दो बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक जो है वो हम यहाँ पे आपके फ्री में कवर करवा रहे हैं अभी हमने एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन किया रात को नौ बजे आज बैजुस एग्जाम प्रेप के ऑफिशियल एप्लीकेशन पे मैं आऊंगा जहां पे हम लोग अशोका धम्मा के बारे में बात करेंगे राइट और फिर आर्ट एंड आर्किटेक्चर ऑब्वियसली विल बी डिस्कस्ड इन द पेड क्लासेस इफ यू हैव नॉट ऑलरेडी डाउनलोडेड आर एप्लीकेशन हियर इज द क्यू कोड प्लीज डाउनलोड इट लेट मी अगेन यू नो remind you that we are going to start with our paid batches on 7th of march please aap jald se jald khud ko enroll kar lijiyega right hamari jo teaching learning process hai wo 10th of march se uh, march se chalu hogi uh, 10th of march 2024 uh, please make the best of uh, whatever time that is left for june 2024 
and December 2024 examinations. We can, you know, provide you all the material that is needed. We can provide you the mentorship that is needed so that you will be able to clear this particular exam, right? We still have time. You will be still, you will still be able to, uh, you know, uh, crack this particular exam with JRF. The only thing that you really need is mentorship. I am clear two times in Maharashtra said bhi clear ki hai. I will be able to guide you properly. Right? What do we offer you when we, know, when we you know, tell you to take the paid subscription? We offer you live classroom sessions. We also offer you comprehensive study module. So notes jo hai, kafi comprehensive milte hai. Quizzes jo hai, immediately after the class you get a quiz. Subject test भी हम लोग लेते हैं. In fact, weekly test लेते हैं हम लोग. तो हमने उस week में जो कोई भी part of Indian history discuss किया होगा, उसके उपर हम MCQ का एक test भी चलाते हैं. Weekly होता है ये. We also have test series. Right before the exam, if you do not attempt test series, then you know, आपकी पूरी preparation पानी में चली जा सकती है. तो test series भी हम लोग करवाते हैं आपसे. Obviously, we also, you know, make you do many, uh, uh, this thing. Uh, previous year question papers also and वहाँ पे बहुत ही अच्छे से discuss होता है previous year question paper क्योंकि हम सबको पता है previous year question paper में से direct question तो नहीं आने हैं वो तो एक बार आ चुके हैं अब आएगा तो उसी topic पे किसी दूसरी प्रकार से question आएगा सही है ना वैसे तो नहीं आएगा जैसे पिछली बार आया था same to same question हर बार थोड़ी ना repeat करता है कोई एक खाद question कहीं पे तो repeat हो सकता है पिछले पांच सालों में एक खाद question वो बाकी छोड़ के मतलब बाकी के जो 99 क्वेश्चंस है आपके हिस्ट्री के सपोज करो कि एक या दो क्वेश्चन रिपीट हो गए बाकी 98 क्वेश्चंस तो नए हैं ना लेकिन टॉपिक वही है सो वी गिव यू अ प्रॉपर डिस्कशन ऑफ द प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन पेपर्स और ऑब्वियसली डाउट रेजोल्यूशन तो है ही यू कैन डायरेक्टली गेट इन टच विद मी ओवर टेलीग्राम योगेश_लाहनकर एंड आई विल सॉल्व योर डाउट्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट वी आर एक्टिव ऑन टेलीग्राम प्लीज स्कैन द कोड फॉर टेलीग्राम चैनल uh, to join the telegram channel and please scan the code on your screen to join the whatsapp uh, group as well we are active on those two and we will be providing you helpful pdfs articles quizzes um, you know infographics so on and so forth apart from that please note that i'll be also providing the ppt that i have used in this particular class on the groups right i will be providing that to you okay so on that note let me you know uh, proclaim that the class is over thank you so much and uh, i'll see you uh, again in my uh, next video and i will also you know i also expect you to see uh, you uh, during my 9 pm classes uh, on badges exam prep and in the paid classes as well which we are going to start on 7th of march and the uh, actual teaching learning process that is the study plan is going to start on 10th of march okay so thank you very much on uh, yeah so thank you very